Preparations are underway nationwide for the 4th of July. For most, they are happy post-lockdown plans, and we are going to get to the real miracle of that today. But first, it is ever more clear that our greatest American cities are in deep trouble. There is just a stark sampling of what is happening out there. And here's just a few looks at some of these horrific incidences. This sexual attack in broad daylight in Brooklyn in the middle of the afternoon. This man just runs up and tackles this woman and forcibly touches her on the street. It's horrific. This is the man, let's get a close up look at his face, that police are looking for right now. And let's go to Chicago. This video reportedly showing the moment when three gunmen jump out of the black Jeep that you see on the left and begin firing away with rifles. They shot seven people. Look at the scene of melee on this street. One of those who was shot was a one-month-old baby who underwent surgery after being shot in the head. Hours earlier, a nine-year-old girl, critically wounded, she was also shot in the head in the back of this vehicle in crossfire, likely gang related, when she was driving with her mother. All of this appears to be rooted in duels that are going on between these gangs in various cities across the country. Now, Chicago's mayor, Lori Lightfoot, insists that crime is down in her city. And she says that certain types of criticism that she's receiving are because of this. How much of this do you think might have to do with the fact that you're a woman, and particularly, specifically a black woman? About 99% of it. I was elected and ran on disrupting the status quo. And when you disrupt the status quo, you are going to make um, people uncomfortable. But the gangs do not appear to be disrupted by any of this, actually. In fact, they are acting quite emboldened. We're going to talk about that with Leo Terrell, who is standing by the root causes of all of this. But first, a senior correspondent, Mike Tobin, on the ground in Chicago with a look, a cold, hard look at what is going on. Hi, Mike. Hi, Martha. And those uh, little girls who were shot were just two of the 32 people who were shot. And that's just the violence from yesterday. The neighborhood where that one-month-old shot, Englewood, has crime tape going up in it almost every day. You have this endless cycle of vendettas, bad deals, the perception of disrespect, and it all results in careless gunfire. Complaining that police are prevented from doing their job, Chicago City aldermen are holding an emergency hearing today to hold the mayor and police superintendent on the carpet. We want her on record to explain how she's going to keep Chicago in safe. Whereas we have seen mass shootings on the rise. We had a shooting in front of my house yesterday by gangbangers checking someone who just happened to come home with his girlfriend. It is out of control and we need to get some results that keep people safe. Now, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot has blamed everything from gun laws to gun shops and courts being closed due to the pandemic. It starts with the criminal courts stepping up and holding people accountable. And you can't do that when the courthouse doors are closed. So please, Judge Evans, open up the criminal courts to trials. However, Timothy Evans, chief judge of Cook County, says it's just not true. His office says there have been 128,000 criminal proceedings in Cook County, 13,000 guilty pleas, 1,000 bench trials, and since March, 25 jury trials. There is a backlog of cases, but the chief judge says the courts have been open and resolving these matters. It is disingenuous for anyone to say the courts have been closed. In past years, the 4th of July has proven to be a violent weekend, so a lot of anticipation, a lot of nervous anticipation going into this weekend. Martha? Yeah, and far fewer police officers on the streets to manage it and deal with these situations. Mike, thank you very much. Mike Tobin. So I want to bring in civil rights attorney and Fox News contributor Leo Terrell. Leo, great to have you with us this afternoon on this thank Friday you, as we head into uh, a busy 4th of July weekend. You know, I want to go back and, and play this. Now, Lori Lightfoot, I should point out, has been criticized on a number of different fronts. I, I guess the most crucial one is the management of crime. Other things have been related to her saying that she only wanted to be interviewed by reporters of color. But I just want to play this for you, this back and forth with the reporter. We just played a snippet of it. But here's, here's the whole thing, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Let's watch. In recent months, uh, there have been questions raised about your, your temperament and uh, your reaction to criticism. Uh, Tribune editorial used the term irascible. Uh, how much of this do you think might have to do with the fact that you're a woman, and specifically a black woman? 
about 99% of it. Women and people of color are always held to a different standard. I understand that. I've known that my whole life. So, Leo, is she, you know, is she kidding herself that 99% of what people are talking about in the city of Chicago right now and, and any criticism that's headed her way is based on skin color and gender? You know, let me just answer this as clear as possible. As a civil rights attorney, as a black American, she's using her race and gender to hide her incompetence. She is basically saying that because she's black, she's being treated differently. No, she's being criticized because she's incompetent. She's played the race card with reporters. She's played the race card when it comes to her own ethnicity. And I just find it sad that when you have a person of leadership who happens to be black, saying that because she's black, she's being held to a different standard. No, she's being held to a standard. And the numbers that you pointed out, Martha, regarding the crime in Chicago, they don't lie. They are real. Those are facts. Her feelings about her race is emotional and a way to get sympathy. It will not work for, for me, and it will not work for people of Chicago. You know, I think about the retired police chief in Portland who fought so hard to end that uh, the zone where police, you know, could barely get in, uh, and she got no help from the mayor on any of that. Um, I think about the uh, police chief and the officers in Los Angeles that we've spoken to recently, who are also um, are, who are also black officers and law enforcement officers who are, are making a completely different argument. They're talking about the you know un, uncuffing law enforcement, so to speak, and allowing them to to do their job to keep. All of these people say, I, I can't, these stories, one after the other, of these babies and little kids being shot in cars, there's lawlessness in certain neighborhoods here, Leo. And I don't see that, you know, that the, the race or gender of the person who's running the place is really helping anybody. No, and that's the thing about it, Martha. They play the race card claiming there is systemic discrimination in these democratic cities run by people of color. But I'm just going to be very blunt with the audience. People of color are being killed and murdered, and lives are being devalued in democratic cities. Case in point, black Oakland police chief begging the city council not to cut $18 million because it's designed to protect people of color. They cut the $18 million. So what that tells me, that black lives do not matter in Democratic City of any color because they are out to defund the police, which makes it impossible to protect all people. It is embarrassing. And this is happening with people of color in charge. Yes. Yeah, so, so here's my question. You know, President Biden uh, and leaders all across this country in some of these Democrat-led cities, some of them Republican-led cities, what are they going to do about this, Leo? Because obviously it, it's going to be something that matters to people in, when they go to the to the election site uh, or mail it in or whatever they do in, in 2022. What is there any indication that they're changing gears here, that they're that they're understanding what's going on? Oh, yes. And I'll tell you exactly what's happening because 2022 is around the corner. You see, the Democrats embraced the riots last year. They call it peaceful protesting. You can show all those videos of shooting. That wasn't peaceful protesting. That was rioting and crime. They see the numbers, Martha. They see the numbers that you just portrayed. And crime is going up. It's the number one issue in this country. And now the Democrats are basically lying, claiming that the Republicans are in favor of defunding the police. No, there's Democrats who are in favor of defunding the police. Republicans support the police. Leo Terrell, thank you very much. Good to see you today, Leo, as always. Thank you, Martha. Happy holiday. You too. You